Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to go over the blood coagulation cascade, which is composed of the extrinsic, intrinsic, and common pathways. When you injure yourself, the wound presents various signals that initiate the different pathways. Let's begin with the extrinsic pathway. When a blood vessel sustains an injury, the endothelium is compromised. Many components of the underlying subendothelial layer, or even the smooth muscle layer, gets exposed to the lumen of the vessel. One of these newly exposed subendothelial components is tissue factor, which is also known as clotting factor 3, or thromboplastin. Tissue factor converts factor 7, which circulates in the bloodstream, into its active form factor 7a. The activated factor 7a forms a complex with both tissue factor and calcium ions that are released from activated platelets that are already at the injury site. This complex then goes on to convert factor 10 into its active form of factor 10a. Meanwhile, the intrinsic pathway is also initiated. Contact with negatively charged surfaces or molecules, such as membrane phosphates from activated platelets, allows for the conversion of factor 12 into its active form. Factor 12A can then convert precalocrine into calocrine, which enzymatically converts even more factor 12 into factor 12A. This positive feedback loop allows for the production of factor 12A to quickly ramp up. Factor 12A then goes on to convert factor 11 into factor 11A. Factor 11A then converts factor 9 into its active form factor 9A. This, along with the active form of factor 8 and calcium ions, make up the complex called 10As. 10As is now able to convert even more factor 10 into the active factor 10A. Last but not least is the common pathway. Factor 10A, factor 5A, and calcium ions make up the important complex prothrombinase. As the name suggests, prothrombinase is in charge of cleaving prothrombin, or factor 2, into its active form thrombin, or factor 2A. Thrombin has a lot of roles in the coagulation cascade. It converts factor 8 into its active form factor 8A, all the way up here in the intrinsic pathway. It's also responsible for converting factor 5 into factor 5A here. Thrombin is also involved in a positive feedback loop, where it increases its own activation by accelerating the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. This large quantity of thrombin converts fibrinogen, or factor 1, into individual fibrin monomers, which then spontaneously forms polymers. The activated factor 13A, which was converted from factor 13 with the help of thrombin, enzymatically creates stable cross-linked fibrin. If you look at the coagulation cascade overall, you'll see that factors 3 and 7 are involved in the extrinsic pathway. Factors 8, 9, 11, and 12 are involved in the intrinsic pathway, and factors 1, 2, 5, 10, and 13 are involved in the common pathway. Thrombin alone is involved in the conversion of factor 2, 5, 8, 13, and fibrinogen, factor 1.